Apple announced that with iOS 26, they are expanding their link tracking protection, which is supposed to remove various tracking parameters from the page URL. However, they provided so little details that many of us started guessing what this actually means. Multiple people in our industry ran tests on this and their results were not consistent. Therefore, we are not 100% sure about the final list of parameters that will be removed. But you can prepare for that. And in this video, I will show you how to preserve at click parameters in your tracking setup with server side tagging. It looks like UTM parameters are kind of safe, at least for now. But nevertheless, I will show you what to do with them as well. When a visitor clicks on a paid ad and then is redirected to your website, the URL of the page is decorated with particular ad click parameters. And each ad network uses different parameters. For example, Google Ads uses GCLED. Also, sometimes it might use additional parameters. And in URL, for example, Google Click ID would look something like this. Then Facebook Ads is using FBCL ID. Then Microsoft Ads uses a different parameter. And even other ad networks, they also have their own particular parameters that are used to layer store that information in a cookie and then help with attribution. So in order to not lose the ad click information, for example, GCL ID, here's what we should do. Here is an example of the URL after the visitor clicked a link and landed on our page. So we will need to configure an additional parameter which has some different name. You can come up with that name on your own and then it would contain the same GCL ID parameter value. So if iOS removes GCL ID, it would still keep this value because iOS, let's say, does not know what XYZ means. But for this method that I will show you to work, it's important that the ad network ad platform, they have this feature to modify the destination URLs and allow us dynamically insert these kind of parameters and their click ID values. So with Google ads, this is possible. But when I'm recording this video, Facebook ads do not have this feature yet. If you're watching this video further in the future, maybe by that point, Facebook will already have some sort of feature. So you will have to investigate this. But in this video, I will show you how to do this with Google ads because there's definitely a feature for that to preserve values of GCLIT, WBRAID and GBRAID. This is a constantly developing situation. Things might change fast. So just keep in mind that after you watch this video, you might still need to investigate whether a particular ad platform that you are using, you will need to check if they support custom URLs where you can insert the click ID somewhere in the URL. Also, did you know that 85% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed? If you want to stay up to date with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics, and if you want to get this kind of videos first, then subscribe to my channel. So the first step in Google Ads is to go to Admin and then Account Settings. On the account level, we will instruct Google Ads that we want to include some additional custom parameters that should contain values of Click ID, GBRAID, and etc. So in the Admin and Account Settings, look for Tracking. And here we have a tracking template. Here we should insert certain values and instruct Google Ads that we need Google Click ID to be available also as some custom parameter. So what should be the parameter names? In this case, they should be something not super obvious, but their final names depend on you. For example, GCLIT could be named GCI or CGCI, C stands for custom or something else. Just make sure that if someone looks at the URL, it's not super obvious for them that this particular parameter is related to Google Click ID. And then the same principle could be applied to WBRAID. It could be just WBR or that other value. GBRAID could be something like this. So in Google Ads tracking template here, first we have to insert the LP URL, which is landing page URL. These curly braces mean that it's sort of like a variable and it will be dynamically inserted by Google Ads. And then after the URL of the landing page is available, we want to add additional URL parameters, also known as query parameters. So we have to add a question mark 
And then we can add the name of the Google Click ID parameter. And I mean custom name. So let's say C underscore GCI equals and then GCLIT, also surrounded by these curly braces. So this should be entered exactly as it is displayed in the video. Then add an ampersand, and you can then insert the parameters for GBraid and WBraid, even though right now when I'm recording this video, it seems that they will not be removed. But it's better be safe than sorry. So we can also handle the WBraid. I will give it this name, then like this, I forgot the equal sign. So like this, then another ampersand, then C underscore GBR, and then like this. So when a person clicks your ad and lands on your website, the URL of the landing page will contain the actual GCL ID parameter, but also will have these custom parameters and their values will be dynamically filled in by Google Ads. So now let's click Save. Now the setup. So I have a website Google Tag Manager container and I have a server Google Tag Manager container. In the server container, I have Google Analytics tag, conversion linker tag. Technically, I could also have the Google Ads conversion tracking tag right here. But to show the example, this is still more than enough. And then in the web container, I just have Google Analytics four tags that send data to my server side container. So all of the changes that you will need to do in this case will be done in the server container. Here in SGTM, go to templates, then in variable templates, search gallery, then look for query replacer. This is a template built by Stape. Then add to workspace, add, and then we will need to create a variable. So what this variable will do is that it will look at the incoming URL. And if that URL has, let's say this parameter, it will replace this with the actual name of the parameter with the correct name, which is in this case, Google click ID, W braid, G braid. And this will be happening in the server, which means that the browser will not know that this happens. And when the request is sent further from your server to Google ads, for example, that request will contain the proper GCL ID available in the URL, even if the browser or some browser extension in the future removes that. So in the server container, let's go to variables, then new variable configuration and select query replacer. This variable looks at the page location of the incoming request and can replace one query parameter with another. For example, if I add row right here, and in my URL, I am using this for the Google Click ID. So I will copy it, paste it, and then I want to replace this with the original proper parameter name. Then let's add another row. And for this parameter, I will be using this. Then for the G braid, I will do this. So if in the future, let's say Facebook introduces some similar feature where you can modify and configure how the Facebook click ID is added to the URL, then you could do the same thing there. You write some rule, this depends on what Facebook will develop. And then here you could just enter that custom parameter name, let's say FBID or FID or whatever, and then you replace that with this. So the principle is quite flexible and is easy to scale. But right now, for my example, this is enough. And then I will name this variable page location with restored click IDs or something like that. Then click save then we have to apply this variable to all tags in your container. Technically, you could do that one by one, at least in some tags, but this is not very scalable. A better way, which is more scalable is to use a transformation, go here, then new transformation configuration, and then augment event. Here, we want to replace the page location with those custom parameters like this. And we want to replace that with the proper values that were restored by our custom variable. So here we will insert that page location variable and matching conditions always apply affected tags all then let's name this 
page location with restored click IDs, for example, and click Save. So now if I go to any tag in the Google Tag Manager container, I will see that transformation is applied to it. So if you create more tags in the feature, they will automatically get that transformation as well. So now we have to test this. Let's click preview in the server container to refresh it or enable it. And then I will go to the website container and click preview to start it or refresh it. But what's important here is that this time we want the URL contain some dummy data, but that URL should look somewhat similar to this because we want to test if this is replaced with the proper names of the parameters. So let's click the preview button. Then in the preview mode, we have to enter the URL of the site. So I will copy this. Then I will copy these because I want to add some mockup information. And instead of these, I will just insert something like this, then W and this and then G and this. So let's see what happens. I will click Connect and the preview mode has connected. Now if I go to the server preview mode and I click on the page view, I can click the request. I can see the incoming request. And here we have some information, but to see a more readable data structure, we can go to event data while I have selected the page view. And then here we see the incoming events page location. So these are our modified parameters that contain the click ID, W braid and G braid right here. However, if I go to tags, while I still have the page view, my Google Analytics tag fired. And here, I will see the modified event data. So because of transformation, this tag accesses a slightly modified data and that modification is right here. So instead of custom name, we are back with gclit, wbraid and gbraid. And if you had more parameters, then the query replacer would have fixed that as well. And since we applied this transformation to all tags, we can also check what happened with the conversion linker. So I am on the page view, I click request, I see the incoming request. And since we had a transformation, which is also applied to the conversion linker, the conversion linker sees the page location, it sees the Google click ID. And because of that, our server responded to the website that a cookie should be created. And this cookie means that conversion linker did its job. And we have our click ID right here. Of course, if this was a real click ID, it would have been much longer, but you get the idea. So once you're done testing, don't forget to publish your changes by clicking the submit button. However, don't forget that just implementing this is not enough. You still need to have a proper server side setup in general. For example, where your requests are sent from the website to your own endpoint. And if you want to reduce the impact of ad blockers, then you might need to modify how your requests look in order for them to be not obviously related to analytics. Because if some browser extension blocks the request, then it does not matter whether the URL contains GCL ID or not. So if you have a server side setup and you're using Stape, then their custom loader will handle this, which in my opinion should be marked as required, not recommended, because without this, you're just wasting your money and time with server side tagging. Some custom loader these days is necessary. By the way, did you know that I have a bunch of free ebooks on Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics? So if you want to better learn these topics, then click the link below the video, download those ebooks and get started. And what about UTM parameters? Well, right now when I'm recording this video, it seems that they are safe, but who knows what will happen in the future. So if at some point you decide that you need to preserve the UTM parameters as well, here's what you could do. The process is pretty much identical to what I've shown before. First, you will need to come up with some new custom names for your UTM parameters that you're using. For example, medium can be med or cmed or whatever. Then you will need to update the tracking template in Google Ads. So here I can add CMED, which could be CPC, then CSRC could be Google, then we have 
campaign, which will be a variable called campaign ID. Then we have UTM term. In this case, it could be C ter, for example, and then oops, I see a typo. So like this, then for term, we can use keyword, for example, then we have UTM content, which will look like this. And then it's variable could be add group ID, for example, I mean, this part, you will need to investigate yourself, what exactly do you want to use and where I'm just showing a general process. And this is not the only place where you will need to modify your UTM parameters, you will definitely need to revisit all other ad networks where you are running ads. And of course, if they allow you to modify the UTM parameters, then also other channels, uh, maybe you're using email marketing platform. So revisit the settings there. And maybe you will need to change their parameter names from UTM medium to something else. So you will need to revisit a lot of things because UTM parameters are more widespread across the companies and you will need to find where you're using them or where are your colleagues using them. And then you will need to instruct them that the new parameters that everyone should be using is not UTM medium, but it's uh, this parameter right here. So when that is done, then you go to your server container, go to variables, then edit the page location restored click IDs variable, and then you can add those parameter names right here. So we have this, this, then this, then content, and then term. And then here we can type UTM medium, UTM source, UTM campaign, UTM content and UTM term, and then you click save. So the most difficult part of preserving UTMs is actually not in Google Tag Manager. It's outside of it, you will need to audit all the places where you're using UTMs. This means email marketing platforms, social media management platforms, then your ad platforms and all other places. And then you will need to replace the classic parameters with uh, your new parameters. And once this is done, maybe we should rename the variable to end UTMs, then click save, then refresh the server container preview mode. Then I will close the website, close the preview mode of the website container. And I will start again because I want to have a modified URL, which will also contain the UTM parameters. I already have prepared them. So I will just add at the end another ampersand and here it is. So medium is email, then sources newsletter, campaign is Black Friday, content is sale is open, and then term is 50% off or something like that. Now, if I click connect, then I go to the server container, I have the page view, I click on the G4 tag, and I want to check the modified event data. And here we have UTM medium, UTM source, UTM campaign, and basically back to business as usual. And that is how you can preserve ad click and UTM parameters with server side tagging. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.